Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a having a fun, nice day. Uh, you're relaxing, uh, not getting too stressed out. Uh, so my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. And one thing I wanted to look at, I, I just keep mulling this over in my head, is if we have declining ore grades uh, across the spectrum of all minerals. And I keep thinking in the back of my head, how much energy is it going to take to extract lower and lower ore grades? So I did some investigation on it, and I'm going to share that with everyone, uh, kind of a, a high-level in investigation I did uh, on ore grades and energy use and some of the things that are baked into the cake in terms of technological improvements uh, to lower the, uh, the, out the energy input. So let's take a look in this. Uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting topic. It was something I was really interested in because it does force how I invest. It, it gives you different different options depending on what this data kind of tells us. So uh, again, I'm going to take a look at the ore grades and the techn technological improvements for mining to see some data on copper. I'm not getting into the details of what those technological improvements are. What I'm doing is I'm taking a high level approach and saying, if we factor in technological improvements, how does that affect energy uh, input? Uh, I was curious on how much energy would be needed to mine lower and lower ore grades. That's what this all spurred from. This is uh, peak copper. I just chose copper because it's a pretty large, um, it, it's, it's something that we mine a lot of. Uh, so it's gonna have a very large impact uh, on energy use. So we've got copper here. I just did kind of what the peak is. This is what someone put together. Uh, they're saying that the peak could potentially be somewhere between these two. I just took the closer peak, went down, and said, wow, that's 2030. Uh, I know we've got all these renewable proje <clears throat> projects. We've got all these electric vehicles. Uh, they want to ramp this stuff up um, all the way to, to 2050, 2060, 2070. And that is going to be in my life. So if I were to look at investments uh, from a very long-term perspective, how does peak copper, uh, the energy demands for getting lower grade coppers, how does this all tie together? Uh, I just wanted to look at this uh, and see. And again, these, this chart here, it may or may not be right. I, I don't have a crystal ball and I don't think they do, but uh, this is the best estimate that they have for a, a peak production rate. Technology could probably um, take lower ore grades, declines, you know, we don't, we won't have as much energy, energy input, uh, and it may increase the peak of this. And remember, that's only a may, it's not will, it, it may increase it. So this is the declining ore grades of copper. In 1990, it was 1.6%, and it's declining, 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 declining. And in 2030, they estimate it to be, you know, maybe a little bit over 0.8%. We've got higher prices enable lower cutoff grades, new projects mining higher grade during early years, higher grade underground mines ramping up. Uh, but the downtrend is lower and lower ore grades uh, of any mineral. I, I just chose copper here. The cumulative energy demand, this is in gigajoules equivalent per ton copper. Uh, you can see that it declined from 1930 to 1970, and then it's increased quite substantially for mining, that is, um, increased quite substantially for 2010. The overall um, demand for the entire process went down and then came back up. Uh, so ultimately, we haven't really improved much in terms of cumulative energy demand over time, although we are increasing the output. Uh, so you could say we're getting more efficient, but the supply uh, and demand are, are going far higher, which requires us to use more energy because we have more total demand and supply. This is cumulative energy demand. This is this, the, the curve, so to speak. So we've got cumulative energy demand here. We've got ore grade here. Uh, the exha exhaustion and increasing supply drives the curve to the left. So we keep going to the left here uh, as we want to increase the supply and as mines become exhausted or we, go or we replace it with lower and lower ore grades. So that moves to the left. 
mechanization uh, looks like it moves it up. But economies of scale moves it down. So mechanization up, economies of scale down, and technological improvements uh, move the scale, the entire, um, the entire, not really scale, but the entire curve downward. So it's, it's kind of weird. Mechani <clears throat> mechanization goes up, economies of scales goes down, technology improvement pull, pushes it down, but exhaustion and increasing supply moves it to the left. A lot of things going on here. Here is the ore grade on the bottom. That's ore grade percent, cumulative energy demand on the left. This is the 1930s curve, 1970s curve, 19, uh, 2010s curve, and technological improvement and renewable energy is, they're saying this is the green. Uh, what I see here, if I were to look at this, is that the technological improvements are uh, diminishing in return. So we're moving down. We had a very large improvement between 1930 and 1970. The improvement between 1970 and 2010, which is 40 years, wasn't that big of a difference. I mean, it's a little bit, but it's not huge. Then we get even a smaller difference between technological improvement. And what they're banking on is that technological improvement plus renewable energy is going to in, uh, decrease this further to the downside. They're saying the future is going to be somewhere in here, given the ore grades of 0.5 and 0.7%. So uh, the technological improvements are really starting to diminish in their improvements, but they're, they're tacking on this renewable energy, saying that renewable energy will make it that much more efficient. Will it? I don't know. Uh, but uh, we're seeing ore grades go to the left. Uh, this is basically where we're at right now is somewhere between this. So I think they chose the correct ore grades. But one thing to keep in mind is if we continue down this path and if we want to create this renewable energy future, uh, basically what they're baking into the cake on this graph right here uh, and in electric vehicles uh, and all these different things that they want to do, it's going to require a lot more copper, a lot more copper. Not just a little bit, a lot more. And we might be starting to get into these lower ore grades down here. Now, if we start venturing into these lower ore grades down here, look at how it goes vertical in the energy uh, demand for mining copper. They, they start to really move to the upside. I would argue that we're already at the heel of this curve right here. This, this point right here is already at a point that's about to go vertical. Because, I mean, this is pretty flatlined over here. So when we're declining the ore grades on this side down here, there's not really a curve that, that really ramps up in energy demand. So we can we can process this stuff down here pretty easily. It's right where this, this guy hits about, I'd say point, I'd say point, point 0.6 maybe. Point 0.6, this thing starts going vertical. Uh, 0.6 here, you get a little bit more before it starts going vertical. So what this is telling us is that the energy demand for mining in general, and I think this is for all of the uh, all of the different types of minerals, uh, is about to go vertical. Um, this is global warming potential uh, for carbon equivalent. It stays pretty low, uh, but it really starts to ramp up around 0.4. Uh, but they're saying that this would would really push it down with renewables if they get the renewables in there and it works. Uh, so they're banking a lot here. If it doesn't work and we're stuck here with 0.5 and 0.6, it's already, I mean, this is going to go rampant, rampantly higher in terms of energy use and consumption. So a lot, lot to unpack here. Um, to me, I, I feel like we're getting really close to where the ore grades are going to decline to an area that energy consumption ramps up vertically. And my feeling is correct because it shows this on the graph here, that 0.5, and this is a lot of the stuff that's coming online, that it's going to ramp up vertically for energy consumption. And this, this ramping of, of energy going up like this and the declining ore grades is what gives you this peak curve. Because basically what you're going to do is you're going to pile in a whole bunch of energy, a whole bunch of time. You're going to have to process all of this uh, extra tonnage, but your throughput is going to decline. Uh, that's what it's saying. And it all agrees with each other here. So that, that's good. 
Uh, good that it agrees with each other. Bad that I think copper is going to be a tough one to extract in the future. Uh, this is technological improvements here. You can see uh, kind of the difference between these two. This is really the renewable energy portion that they are expecting. Uh, they're saying that the ore grade, the dark ones, 0.5%. This is ore grade, 0.7%. Uh, and the energy difference between these two and these different uh, cases that they that they studied, S1, S2, S3, S4. Uh, and this is the, the, the cases that they studied over here with renewable energy uh, and the increased efficiency with renewable energy. Here's 2015 copper production cash cost by company. I just wanted to let you guys know this. SCCO, that's uh, Southern Copper, BHP, Rio Tinto, Vale, Freeport Mc McMoran, Codelco, Antifagasta, Glencore, Anglo America. And then it just goes vertical after this. I mean, it really pops up higher. And it's a bunch of little different producers here. Uh, I think we're gonna have to turn on everything. Uh, so when looking at cost curves, and if you're a, a bigger investor, uh, at the bottom of markets, <clears throat> people tend to go after these guys. And then when the price goes up, the higher cost producers go up more rapidly. So what I've been doing is I kind of piled into these guys early on, uh, and now I'm looking at these guys to pile in because uh, you're going to see these guys go vertical. Glencore is going to go up quite a bit, Anglo-American, and then all these little guys uh, that will be turned on. Now, the price is up here now. So all these are going to be turned on at some point. Uh, they're going to be doing new projects. Uh, but these are the ones that that are kind of the big boys. These are the big boys. And I think these, are, these guys are going to print money and they're going to pay it out in dividends. Uh, so I think they're all good. Uh, small copper companies, some of these other ones up here, they're all good. I'm going to, I'm going to get money in all of them. Uh, cause I think copper is a bridge to a renewable future. Here is the growth potential of the copper majors from 2020 to 2030 in kilotons. Uh, these are the net increase over time, but not over, well, not over time, but the net increase versus all of these, uh, producers. Here's the projects in the dark blue. The base case is um, the light blue. So Nornicle, Nornicle is one that I like a lot. Uh, there's the copper production there and the projects that they have and the base case is also up. Uh, so that looks good. Cause Minerals, I don't know these as much. Antifagasta, Zinjin Mining, uh, BHP Group. They got some projects coming on, some big ones. FQM, Rio Tinto's got some big projects. Glencore's got some massive projects. Same with Codelco, Grupo Mexico, Anglo, and Freeport. Uh, all these are pretty good. They all have some projects to increase production. That's what we want. So those all look pretty good. Uh, so what does this mean? <clears throat> Me going over all this, what does it mean? Uh, if we have technological breakthroughs, we can invest in lower grade exploration companies and technology will improve and mine those lower grades. That's one way to look at it. Another way on the opposite side is if 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 uh, if if they don't if if they don't have technological breakthroughs, uh, the product in hand will be worth much more as the cost curves explode higher, uh, especially with the energy input. Uh, and what I do is I take a dual approach here. I'm looking out uh, for my kids, uh, for my retirement that might be 10, 20, 30 years out. 40 years out. I'm looking at this from a very long-term perspective. And one one way that you can play this, uh, in, it's kind of in the middle, is you invest in royalty companies and uh, and in the mining companies along with physical metals above the ground. So you do kind of a, a, a dual approach. Now, I'm not saying that we should be doing this with copper. I'm just saying this in, in, in general terms. Uh, these The declining ore grades is, is impacting absolutely everything. Silver, gold, platinum, uh, copper, tin. I mean, just all of them. They're all declining. It's just all the way down to, uh, it'll, it'll asymptotically approach a number that is very, very low ore grades. Uh, as they asymptotically approach a very low number, the energy input is going to increase at an exponential pace. So at some point, and I don't know exactly when that point is, and I don't know the time frame, uh, as declining ore grades go down, 
the energy input goes up and these projects get more difficult to, to, to do. Because really you're gonna mine just a whole gigantic area. Uh, and some of these projects may be in areas that are not very easy to get to. So we went and we got all the high grade stuff that is easy to get at. That's what we've done in the world. The next phase is lower ore grades, harder to get stuff, and energy is going to go up exponentially. So I'm taking an approach where it's like, hey, this one's in a good location, but it has low ore grades. I'll put money into it, and maybe the technology will improve to really make this a, a, a feasible project. Then I look at other stuff and I'm like, well, if that doesn't work, I'd rather just have metal in my hands. Uh, platinum, silver. The, silver is the second commodity in the world in terms of its uses. So it, it provides very high value to society. So when you look at the value of a metal, like platinum is very high, uh, silver is very high, copper is very high. Uh, but copper's got it, copper's a lot. Copper has a, a lot of uses. It is very valuable to society. Uh, but it's also pretty abundant in the Earth's crust. So I'm looking at things that, that can store wealth, uh, that have high storage of wealth density, like platinum's very good, gold's very good, uh, and silver's pretty good. You can take those and, and do a physical approach. I think there's you can't really lose there, I think. And then when you look at some of the mining companies, you can take an approach where, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speculate on a little bit lower ore grade, uh, and, and hope that technology comes through and renewables come through uh, and we can process that way. Now, renewables might not be cheaper. That's not a given. We don't have renewables out here that, that says this is 100% cheaper. We don't have those mining. Nothing's been swapped over yet. So uh, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how that impacts some of our mining investments. Uh, if you're in the sweet spot where they're already making a little bit of money, something like a BHP, uh, Southern Copper, Rio Tinto, Vale, they're already making money. So I think those are like in that sweet spot where if the prices go up, you make more money. And if you get technological improvements, you make even more money. And they're for surely gonna implement it if they're a big, large mining company, uh, mining all of these different minerals. Uh, so that's what, I, that's what I have. Hopefully this interests you guys. Uh, I was pretty interested in the energy uh, consumption Giving, given the ore grades. And given that these ore grades are all declining across all these different minerals, uh, I don't want to see this. Well, uh, I'm almost investing as if they're going to they're gonna increase at an exponential rate, uh, which means that you're going to have anything in your hand is going to be exponentially valuable. A and that with time, uh, we're going to see larger and larger swings in these prices as our cost curves uh, jolt higher because everything that's going to be new that's going to be coming on to replace the exhausting uh, projects today I mean that they're all going to be high cost hope you guys like this information give me a thumbs up leave comments below on what you guys think love to hear from you guys uh, and thank you for listening this is finding value